was studying something. Remember this. How Proverbs talked about instructions. Receive my instructions. And it talked about instructions being better than provision. And verse 10 says, receive my instruction not silver, and knowledge rather than choice gold. Look at verse 11. For wisdom is better than rubies, and all the things that you may be desired are not to be compared to it. So think about this. It's saying everything else is not to be compared to wisdom. Now this is so powerful because it shows you that wisdom is really the root system of all of the kingdom manifested. You should cry out for wisdom. Once you cry out for wisdom, now everything else that comes with wisdom, including health, including wealth, including peace and victory, all those things are hidden in wisdom. So once you get wisdom, all those things start manifesting, but they're inside of wisdom. When, when you have wisdom, you think different. Like today, I was handling a lot of business and I went to a, a place like there's certain, um, <laughs> there's certain uh, dress clothes and things like that. There was a suit there, right? There was a suit there. You know, the man gave a certain amount of money. It didn't look like it didn't look like the money that he gave he gave it for. So the price that he put out, I was looking at him like I got I got a whole closet full of suits. It, it's just funny how sometimes you look at people, you just see the con man. <laughs> so he was talking about the suit and all that. He was trying to convince me and everything like that. And he ended up saying this. He said. He said, buy, 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 the, buy, buy, buy the suit. He said, uh, he said, listen, that suit ain't going to bother you financially. You got it. You can buy it. What you, what you want, lying? I can buy it. <laughs> but here's what I told the man. I said, listen, what I'm about to do. That same amount of money that you just put up the table. I, I, he said, I said, I'm going to sew it. He said, huh? You going to sew it? What that mean? I said, I'm going to give it to God. He said, huh? He said, oh, what you is, you, you, you about to give it to God. I said, yeah, I'm about to give it to God. I said, I don't think that this suit is worth what you said. <laughs> he said, why do you think that? I said, man, listen, long story. But I'd rather take this money and give it to God. You pit up a figure like that. I don't think that the figure like that. He said, nah, I, I'll make a deal with you. I'll make a deal with you. I said, nah, nah, I don't want no deal. <laughs> It says, I, I, I walked out and sold it. I sold it into the gospel. Because my, my wisdom is, I don't think that this is worth that type of money. I want to give it to God. I want to flip this money. Yes, I can buy it. Yes, it's in my financial reach. But that's not the wisdom for that moment. See, wisdom makes you sensitive to worship. Wisdom makes you sensitive to honor. And even though things are in your power, you yield to the power of God above everything. And that's the gloriousness of wisdom. That even when things do get in your power, you want the power of God to be glorified above everything else. So since I took that money and I sold it, I could have bought that suit. 
I could have bought it. It looked nice. It didn't look the price that he was saying, but I decided I'd rather sell this. I not do that all the time, by the way. I weigh out things sometimes I could buy it, but I'd rather sell it. I've sold more money than five people cars put together. You put your car together, you, all, all the total price of your vehicles. Because I think that money is better sown than spent. Remember my story. Watches and all this different type of stuff. I ain't wear jewelry for years. It was a long period of time where I wore no jewelry. And I grew up wearing jewelry. I had jewelry as a little baby. And I didn't wear jewelry for a long period of time because I was in a time of sacrifice. When you're in a time of sacrifice, you're showing God stewardship. And the stewardship has a payday. Everybody must understand that sowing has a payday. Sowing is not, okay, when I get to heaven, things will manifest for me. That's not sowing. Sowing has a payday. It has a due season. A due season means that the father has an appropriate time where he say, I want to pay you for listening to my system. I want to pay you for following my instructions. And saints, when that day comes, it's a glorious day. Because stuff start moving. But here's what I want you to see is that you have to identify the raindrops before the flood. Because when you are honoring God, you will see his sweetness. I remember when I used to honor God. In the younger stages, I, re I remember telling you I, people bought me basketball courts. People took me shopping for clothes and even told my mother, hey, just to show you, I don't want to do him any harm. I, you can go with us, Miss Holmes, but we're not trying to harm your son. We just feel we're supposed to bless him. And I was taking the money that my mother gave me and sowing it. And so... Very early, I begin to see the power of seed sowing. Saints, here's the danger of school. When your parents raise you a certain way and you go to school like nobody's parents are raising them that way, basically. And so companies start corrupting the excitement of divine activity. It doesn't utterly stop you, but it destroys the excitement because saints, when I was going to school, I had to willfully, intentionally be on fire for Jesus. So what I would do was I stayed in my same vein and God so graciously let the vein that I was in still be attracted to people. I remember one time we had some a boy in the classroom. He was the baddest kid in the class. And boy, that boy was bad. And he was in gangs and everything. But he took a liking to me. They had put that boy in school, in school suspension. They had suspended him. He was getting in fights. He was disrespecting the teacher in the classroom. I'll never forget when the teacher gave me 10 minutes to preach the gospel in a public school. At the beginning of our class, this ain't got nothing to do with no spirit in the class. The class subject was, she was teaching something else, but she said, I'm going to let you talk to the children here. And the boy was inside the class. He was the baddest boy there. When I say bad, he was, he was unrestrainable. That's what I mean bad. Like nobody could tell him nothing. It don't matter if they called the, the in-school security or whatever. He still would rage. He was demon possessed, basically. That's what he was. He was demon possessed. But I understood that. So I had 10 minutes. She said, and she really kept that 10 minutes. She didn't let me go over 10. <laughs> it says, I'm inside of a school. These are little children. They can snitch. But God had everybody subdued with his spirit. Now, I only had 10 minutes, though. 
<laughs> she wasn't going to give me no 11. She ain't give me 10 minutes in one second. She just gave me 10. And saints, all I would talk about was the Gospels. I would talk about how the Lord Jesus went around healing and delivering and setting people free and how he died on the cross and how his spirit is alive today and his spirit will come inside of you. And once his spirit come inside of you, you become a different girl. You become a different boy. I wasn't talking about men because ain't nobody was in there was a man. <laughs> I wasn't talking about woman because ain't nobody was a woman. Now, we probably had some bull daggers and some, ooh, but other than that, let me tell you something, Singleton, there's always somebody named Singleton in there. <laughs> I'm glad I got my girl. Get your head up. Oh, get your, shut, shut this living single off. It's not even funny. Martin was way better. I don't get it. For you old timers up there. Uh, who used to have a crush on each other? Singleton and Ray Jean or whatever? I don't know. I don't know about that cougarness and cracky, crackiness. And saints, the boy was so bad. And then all of a sudden, I would do that. And that boy came to me after school. I said, hey. When, when you was talking about Jesus in there. What you mean that he can come inside and then you'll be a different boy? What does that mean? You, I started explaining to him. I said, when Jesus come inside of you, then your behavior switches because Jesus is going to be talking to you. He going to be pitting thoughts in your mind. He going to be suggesting things to you. So you're going to have wisdom. You're going to be higher in your behavior. So the, the boy, the baddest boy said, well, well, how can we do that? He asked me, how can we do that? Now, this is the boy that they can't restrain. They don't put all type of heavy restriction on him. It's not working. But the Lord let me get in through that. And now I preach the gospel to the boy. Basically, I just let him in that prayer. Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive me of my sins. Take me over. I was doing that small. Saints, I was doing all these things when I was small. I was sowing when I was small. Saints, I want to give you a beautiful message about the seed. It is a beautiful activity that you offer to God to worship God. And this is your destiny. But God has a time where he's going to respond back to you to let you know how he felt about all of that worship you was rendering to him. It's called a due season. Your due season is where God says, hey. I want to show you how I was watching you in secret. When you didn't feel me, I was, I was feeling you. I want to say this so powerfully to you that when you don't feel the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost still feels you. So grieve not the spirit. Even walking in a tangible anointing, I didn't always feel the tangible power of God, the fire of God. I didn't always feel that. But there came a day where the fire of the Holy Spirit came upon me and baptized me. And I felt the tangibility of that fire. Now, all the other times where I wasn't feeling the tangibility, I was still seeking the face of God. There was a time where I'm sowing seed and all I'm doing is naming my seed. I remember I had a phone and it was a flip phone. It was one of them cheap phones. And shoot, it probably was an Obama phone <laughs> before Obama came in office. <laughs> Saints, when you get that Obama phone, they call you on the phone. You up there arguing with your girlfriend. No! Get, 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 get. Shut, shut! Shut! Wait, call, call it in. Call it in. Call it in. Call. Hello? Huh? Hello? You there? Dang, I done ran out of minutes, man. And you ain't finished your argument. You just... Saints, why, why there's always somebody that be up there, they talk extra loud and always want to argue. They always want to argue out loud. And saints, I was on the phone. Hey, hello. What? Huh? You shut, you shut, you shut. Okay, see me when I come through. See, he hello. Huh? Hello. You there? 
Now Obama phone just cut off on you. <laughs> and since I used to have the phone and I took my phone and this is what I used to do. When I was so a seed, I would write in my phone digitally. I just sowed a seed here and I would write down in my, note, my, note, in my notepad in the flip phone. That was a cheap phone. That phone, if you tried to do a video on there, it'll look like your parts was out because <laughs> you put your arm out and, hey, what, what you doing in that video? No, this is my arm, man. This is a signal on here, man. It's not clear. <laughs> Shoot, this, this is my arm, man. I was lifting weights. Oh, oh, okay, all right. So an arm come out. This way. So with the flip phone, it, it, you know, you can't do nothing. But I found a way to utilize that phone. I would write down all my seeds. And since I would sow seeds and patterns, and since I remember when I was just sowing small money, I was working my way up. The more you sow, the more wisdom you have. And one of the harvests that God gives you is he minister open, open doors to you and opportunities. That's the power of the seed. When God can speak to you and have you sow, he can speak to someone else to sow favor in your direction. Saints, I want you to always remember this. That our opportunity is finances disguised. It's an opportunity, but it's really finances disguise. And I started looking around me and I began to see how the spirit would talk to people on my behalf. I remember one time in the midst of me sowing, I was sowing like I was sowing like a low amount because I didn't have much. But I would take the much that I had at that time and I would flip it. And then I would go on fast just so that I could have a, a, a reasonable amount to sow. So I was doing that. And I remember one time I had got about $300 and I was so happy, boy, because I said, man, this seed about to go up. And so like I had that 300 and I, off the jump, I sold 150. Then I had 150 back. I said, I don't even want half. This is not my harvest. So then I sold 50 more. Then I found myself sowing about 50 more. <laughs> Left with like $50. Then I sold about 20 more. Ended up with like $30. And I felt so much joy in that. Because my aim was I am now functioning as a true worshiper. Are you seeing this? The reality of knowing that I am functioning the way that the father ordained for a man to function, it brought joy to me. And so saints, I was, I was hungry and happy. <laughs> Blessed be God. I was hungry and happy. Saints, you ain't never met a fasting nigga like that, man. I was hungry and happy because at, <laughs> doggone it, I was hungry and happy because what I realized, my future got abundance in it. So I'm not worried about what's happening now. Because what's happening now is I, I, I'm, I'm like Noah. I'm building an ark. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. I'm building the ark. So when the timber is there, when the wood is there, when, when, when the foundation is there, I don't mind because I'm building an ark. And so my sowing brought me pleasure because I realized that this was the functionality of a man. When I say man, I mean male and female. Women actually have a stronger sowing grace. You know why? Because they're helpers. They're helpers. And so a woman will help a man sow correctly because a woman is uh, the strongest level of seed sowing. That's why you see that, that Solomon had men in his kingdom, but here comes the queen of Sheba. She busted open. We don't know what else. Don't think about it too long and strong because it's late night. Please just let me finish my broadcast, man. 
You can't interrupt me. Calm down. But the windows of heaven was open because the queen of Sheba, she was carrying that help me anointing for sowing. <laughs> Shoot. I remember hearing that song. The freaks come out at night. Well, like, well something else come out at night too. But I'm, 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 I'm holding myself down until the appointed time. Thank you. Come on, keep it moving. Get the big old trick out the bus. Get out the bus. I don't want. I don't want no problems. Get her, get her out. Thank you. Let me preach. Thank you. Bye. Snubber. <laughs> Saints, it's so funny because even when I was a teenager, I never forget one time I was preaching at a, a a Baptist church. It was full of black people. A Baptist church, even though it was Baptist, it was still full of black people. There wasn't no white people in there. And um, we had a large crowd that night. I was visiting. They weren't my church or nothing like that. And when I came out the van, there, there was a whole bun bunch of uh, there was a whole bunch of. <laughs> Megan the Stallions with big toes. <laughs> We're not going to talk about that any longer. Cause, of, um, So, God looks at how pleasurable you are in worshiping him. God looks at God looks at how pleasurable you are in worshiping him. That's what he looks at. That's what he looks. So he sees, he sees. Saints, I saw a picture, man. I saw I saw a picture. Oh my God. I saw, I saw, I saw a picture and in the picture it said, it said, it said I see why Tory shot the man. See why Tory shot them, shot them MFs. <laughs> it, had, it, had, it had the, it had the, big old toes. <laughs> Ladies, some of y'all, your toes came out there because your mama was abusing you. Your mama, your, your, your mama had you walk. Your mama had you walk out there. Your mama had you walk out there. Your mama had you walk out there with no shoes on at the ice cream truck. Saints, only in the hood you got a crab man. We used to have a crab man that came through the neighborhood selling crabs. Boy, saints, I was small, but it was always them big old booty ladies up there trying to stand in front of the crab. I'm like, I'm trying to get me a cream circle, man. Trying to get me a cream circle. This man's selling crab and cream circles at the same time. I'm like, I can't see. Shoot. I can't see. Move her aside. Move her aside. We got, we got this elephant woman in front of her face, man. I'm trying to see these cream circles. I'm trying, I'm trying to see some cream circles. I'm joking around. So when 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 I was sowing, I realized it's forming a life. But see, when I got to my teenage years, I got real militant. And saints, the wiser you become, the more silent you move. So so I wasn't telling nobody I was sowing, but I was actually always like that, even in my younger years, because um, like I would hide my seed sowing. I had this type of mentality that I don't want nobody to see my spiritual activity. Like if I fast, if I sow, if I, because I had read that in the Bible where King Jesus was talking about in that day, 
He said, if you are praying, if you are fasting, anoint your face, dot, 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 and don't pray uh, on the street corner like the Pharisees do because they do it to be heard. So I was looking at all that stuff. So when I was sowing, I didn't want nobody to know about me sowing. And also, I didn't want nobody to damage the momentum I had because saying sowing takes momentum. And see, God not only ministers seed, he ministers pictures. I, I, oh my goodness. That's going to be good to y'all. That's sowers. Uh, the sower on this line is going to bless your soul. Remember that statement that I just said. God doesn't just minister seeds. He ministers pictures. Because when I was sowing, I would see pictures of myself moving a certain way on earth. Like I knew what I was going to produce. You see what I'm saying? So... So, um, the seed is not the only thing God is ministering to you because for the momentum to work for you to sow, you're going to have to see what that seed can produce. See, when I get money, right? The money will speak to me of what I can produce with it. I can buy this, I can accomplish this, I can finish this. Remember I was telling you today that I had the power to buy this suit that the man was talking about, but I didn't, I didn't feel like God's money, I wanted to invest it there. I felt like I could sow it and touch God rather than buying something that I didn't even feel like had the value. I felt like I could use all that money for a seed. It seems that suit costs a lot of money. When I say it costs a lot of money, it, it was like for somebody that got suits in their closet, I got a whole suit closet. I got a whole closet that's just full of suits. That's all it is. All that's in the closet is suits. So for somebody that knows suits, I'm like, nah, I got way more, more, more classier stuff than, than, and, and, nah. And I say, I'm a soap. So I took the money and I sold it and I felt good about it. I didn't feel grievously. And saints, even today, I understand grudgingly because grudgingly is like when you sow, but then in the back of your mind, you say, I could have handled this. No, that's the grudgingly. So never, never, never let God see your heart intertwining with other stuff when you sow, because remember, God is telepathic. You see what I'm saying? So when I sowed the seed, I didn't look back like Lot's wife. My goodness. Uh. See, when the seed leave me, I'm not trying to reconcile with the seed. Oh, my goodness. I got to, I got to talk on here. I got to talk on here. Because, see, this apostolic stuff here, this, this, this governmental stuff. When, when, I see, when I leave the seed, I'm not supposed to reconcile with it. And saints, I'm going to tell you how in my life, how the devil has worked. The devil has tried to get me to eat seeds many a times. I have done stuff to sow. And then the ministry would call me and say, well, the car was declined. Meanwhile, it was my bank blocking the money because they thought it was spam. So then the bank, when you call the bank, they say, do you approve of this transaction? And the devil say, no, 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 ha, shh, no, you don't approve. And the demons say, just get the money back. God didn't want you to do it. And I have to tell, no, I approve of the payment. And then they say, well, if you want to approve of the payment, you're going to have to use your card again. Oh, my goodness. And you know what the devil telling you? Well, well, this God showing you a sign. You need that money. Don't sow it. And in my younger years, I still was militant. I got angry. I said, hell no. I'm not going to let hell intervene in what I'm doing here. I'm working with a mantle. I almost said working with a monster. <laughs> no, I'm working with a mantle. I said, I wonder what that be like. That be like. <laughs> Shoot. I'm sowing seed from the back. <laughs> Wait, that didn't sound too right either. <laughs> Let's just edit that one out and keep on moving. We can't do nothing about it. This is so, sometimes you got to breathe, stretch, and shake 
and let it go. Sometimes you just got brief stress shake and let it go. And same thing. So I remember I'm I'm hearing them say, well, we declined the transaction. So if you you could use your card in a couple a uh, couple uh, minutes and then you could do the transaction again. And I have to persevere with the seed because I've just been given an option to eat the seed and everything is actually in my authority now because the seed that I sowed didn't go through. And that was a what we call, um, <sighs> risky seed. I'm saying risky so that you can understand the, the importance of the seed because it'll look like you out on a ledge. It'll look like now you have to lean on the father. So even with a risky seed, the devil thought that the devil was smart. Have them decline it so that it'll come back to me. When I was young, guess what I would do? I would all the more get back in there and sow it. And I... I See, you got to understand, why am I like this? Because um, the soil used to be a sower. The wealthy man used to be the poor man. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. The preacher used to be the preach too. You see what I'm saying? Okay, so remember when a trainer has abs and he got muscles, not muscles, muscles, because there's mus in the skulls. The skulls got, <laughs> don't think about it. Just, just, just keep on, <laughs> just keep on. But we all saw that crazy, that crazy, uh, that, that crazy hyena that came out on uh, Maury. Remember on Maury, he always hopped out there wanting to fight them women. He spit all up in their face. He spit, that hot dog spit all up in their eye pupils. After he finished talking to them teenagers, they smelled like Vienna sausage and spaghetti. There was only two chicks that smelt like bona fide Colgate. The other of them smelt like Obama Gate. All of that. So when everything was going on, that man used to just hop out of nowhere, and they used to disrespect their parents. He said, like, "Don't disrespect your parents. You think that you're playing with me?" The girl used to be like, <laughs> and the man was up there. He just hop. He said, "Shut." Shut up before I knock you out. You want peace? You want peace of me? Huh? Up there, disrespect your mama. She raised you. <laughs> uh, and he was all up in her face, just breathing all that tobacco breath on her. Somebody had steak and shake stains all over their cheek. <laughs> they get with their husband, their husband don't believe it. What 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 this stain right here? <laughs> He was spinning. <laughs> the husband like, well, well, well what, what this thing? <laughs> this look like a cheek. <laughs> this this look like a cheek stain right here. Now I believe you. I believe you. You you born again. You are redeemed. But I want. I still want to know what happened to this cheek right here. The cheek look like it's stained. The cheek looked like it got stains. I know he washed all your sins and stains, but I don't know if them stains was washed. <laughs> what what that is right? This is this. He spit steak and shake on me when he was rebuking me. <laughs> and they had a number eleven with some milkshake. <laughs> he had another a number eleven with some milkshake. <laughs> So he used to just spit on them girls. He used to spit on the boys too. All the boys had smelled like ham hock juice. <laughs> so, so they would always repent because he yelled at them, took them to jail, 
was just barking at rah, 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 rah. And saints, after they couldn't take that Tabasco sauce on the side of their face no more, they all just apologized to their mama. They couldn't keep smelling the putridness of, 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 of all of that collard greens scent that was involved. <laughs> so, <laughs> all of that expired pig feet residue that was <laughs> Oh my God! Woo! Saints, Saints, I remember one time I'll never forget. Um, I remember one time my mother was praying for a couple, and um, the the couple, the the man, he he up there, you know, his his woman was real submissive to him, which is which is commendable. It was commendable, <laughs> but his feet had looked like dragon tails, so. She took his feet out. She about to clip his toenails. And since I started ducking because I didn't want no toenail to hit my eyes or none of that. I want both of my eyes to work properly because I had saw that show with Martin when uh, they clipped that toenail and that toenail, that toenail had supernatural abilities in it. It was Byron and that toenail was just flying in the air and somehow it shimmy shaked and got and then pia hit him right in the head and knocked Knocked him right in the head. His head was knocked out. I synced it. I sought it. So I was a little precautious. I didn't want the toenail to hit me. So when she would start cutting nails, I used to hide behind my mama. I would want to make sure that my eyes didn't get hit because I saw that Martin show. And Saints, I looked at his feet. I said, this is a killer whale. This ain't no real person. Like, how... How do people get with men with feet like that? Now, saints, let me just tell you this. Let me just give you a secret, man. You can't tell nobody, but man, let me tell you something. No, I'm not going to tell you. I'm not going to tell you my secret. Let me just move on by my business. I just want. But I, uh, at the same token, <laughs> I was saying to myself, but listen, this lady will cut those nails. She's not concerned about it hitting her eyes. See, Submission is not conscious of danger. But divine submission is conscious of the person they're called to submit to. The lady couldn't see what I saw because I didn't have the assignment of submission on me. He had, she had the assignment uh, of submission on that werewolf that she was married to. I'm going to keep on moving on. I'm going to keep on moving on. Glory to God. <laughs> it was a werewolf that she was married to. This. <laughs> Proverbs chapter 3. Look at this verse. Um, look at verse. Uh, let's, let's go here. About wisdom. It says, she is a tree of life to them that lay lay uh, hold upon her and happy is everyone that retaineth her. Look at verse 18. Wisdom, she is a tree of life to them that lay hold upon her and happy is everyone that retaineth her. Think about this. So when you're walking in wisdom, now you have the tree of life. Now, saints, remember what was Adam doing with his tree of life? He was sowing. He was sowing. He was sowing. The sowing hands was magnified. It was introduced and it was all supplied to him to sow. So when, 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 when you're sowing, you're operating in a tree of life. Functionality. And see, the tree of life is a lifestyle that God ordained for you to even receive as the tree that you are. See, the tree of life, it is the system of God. It is God himself. It is an angel of God, the angel of wisdom, but it's also 
a reflection of what you have been anointed to receive, which is life and life more abundantly. See, the tree of life is a system, but you become that system yourself. My goodness. So saints, when you sow in, that's the system. When you are sow up, you are the system. My goodness. So when you sow in, that's the kingdom of God. When you are a sower, you are the kingdom of God. My goodness, my goodness, yeah, yeah. When you're sowing, you're worshiping, but when you are a sower, you are a true worshiper. Glory to God, hallelujah, glory, 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 glory. Because now you are becoming the system in which you're working. See, God said, let there be light, but then God said, I am light. So he said, let there be light, meaning system, flow. But then he said, I am the light of the world when he came down as Jesus. Well, he's saying, I am what I said, let there be. So saints, in your life, that's the same what happens. You say, let there be light. You, you, you operate in the activity of light, which is revelation. You operate in the activity of light, which is love. You operate in the activity of light, which is maturity, which is forgiveness, which is wisdom, which is obedience and consistency and diligence. But then you operate as the light yourself. You operate in the ability, but then you are the ability. So saints, a woman has to operate in virtue. That's the system. But then she is the virtuous woman. You see, the virtue was the system flowing, but the virtuous woman is now the system has become her. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. So watch this here. Wealth is a part of the system of God, but then you become wealth. Oh my goodness. Money cometh is a part of the system of God, but then you become money cometh. Riches is a part of the system of God, but then you become rich. Prosperity is the, in the system of God, but then you become prosperity. See, Joseph didn't just have a prosperity anointing. He was prosperity. So the fact that he was in Potiphar's house, money was attached to Joseph. So Potiphar saw more money because Joseph had the more money that Potiphar was looking for. Potiphar thought that the money was in just having somebody that could assist his business. But really, it was Joseph that had the bank system, the governmental uh, benefits of God being released to Potiphar. So understand this, saints. Joseph was an apostle. Saints, I want to say something to you that, that's so marvelous. That Solomon was an apostle and prophet. But see, the name apostle, it wasn't professed or confessed in, in uh, the Old Testament because the apostles that we see moving, they had physical encounters with King Jesus. They had physical encounters with King Jesus. And so the apostles that we see operating in that time, in the New Testament, King Jesus was right there mentoring them. And then we see Apostle Paul, of course. We see Matthias come on the scene. They didn't have King Jesus, literally, but then they had the disciples that was mentored by Jesus that was operating as Jesus. Remember, they looked at Peter and they said, we know that this man was mentored by Jesus because they're not all that smart. Because they listened to the wisdom that they had, the boldness that they carried. And they knew that King Jesus had reincarnated himself in them saints born again is just king jesus reincarnating himself in 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 you see saints i'm jesus to you but you jesus to me so so what you got to understand is that you are jesus reincarnated to please me the same way i'm pleasing you bring me joy the same way i'm bringing you joy Bless me the same way I'm blessing you. 
Minister to me the same way I'm ministering to you. You have a Jesus realm on the inside of you. So since when Abigail met, uh, 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 when King David met Abigail, he met the great God Jehovah in a female body ministering to him and supplying all his needs. Mm, 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 mm. See, saints, God was already a sower. He made Adam and the main thing he magnified, I'm going to give you this herb bearing seed because God was showing him, I created you to be me to me. Oh my gosh. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Hereby you understand the mystery of prophet Joshua Holmes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because when we deal with Adam, all Adam was assigned to do was be God to God. And God said, I made you in my image and likeness so that I could see myself doing to myself what I want to do to myself. So I like somebody that will sow seed into me. So I'm going to give you this herb bearing seed and I want you to sow. Oh my gosh. And if you sow, he said, it shall be for your meat. Saints, do you understand what this really means, right? I did a teaching on it before, but I'm going to give you another revelation. Every time Adam sold, he was going into a depth of the God that he was. <laughs> Come on, let's pull. Money coming to me now. Every time he sold, the hidden realms of God that was in him was now being revealed. Remember, God made him in his image and likeness because God was saying, I want to see myself operating in you for me. So God said, I'm going to bless you, which really means I'm going to release power on you to be me to me. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. So saints, when Melchizedek blessed Abraham, there was a realm of Melchizedek that Melchizedek gave to Abraham and said, now be me to the children that shall be underneath you. Be their high priest for the blessing. Oh my gosh. So what did the Bible say in Galatians chapter three, verse 14, that the blessing of Abraham shall come upon thee. Oh my gosh. And the promise of the spirit, the spirit came after the blessing. So, ah, so some of y'all got the spirit. What you think going to happen that you got the spirit, the blessing got to show forth. Because this is a part of the sons of God coming forth in the earth. That the blessing of Abraham got to be seen on you. Think about this. Melchizedek blessed Abraham. He released the realm of uh, Melchizedek on Abraham for high priesthood functionality for his children concerning the blessing. So saints, guess what happens when Satan tried to take you to court and Satan tried to steal your inheritance, try to Esau your destiny. Watch this. What you think happened? Not only is Jesus in that court case, but Abraham is right there. Abraham right in that court case. You know why? Because Abraham said, I got the power as a high priest over this blessing. And I decree and I declare that they got all right to inherit everything that the blood was shed for them to have. They got the right to be healthy in their body because I was blessed. I lived a long life and I didn't have no sickness. I didn't have no diseases. I didn't have no pains. I didn't have no iniquity. I didn't have no struggle with sin. I didn't fall short of the glory. I didn't fall into deception. I didn't turn my back on God. I was powerful. I was free. I was bold. I was anointed. I was very rich. I had power over the enemy. I had my foot on the devil's neck. That's the same thing. They have the power of attorney to receive in this life. See, see, Abraham be right there in the court case. Because Abraham say, I got high priest authority. Where did he receive that high priest authority? He was sowing into Melchizedek. 
He was sowing. And every time that seed was sowing, high priesthood anointing was flowing to Abraham for you today. Saints, you got to understand Melchizedek was the king of peace. That means that he, he was the master of wholeness. He was the master of the plan of God. He was a king over the plan of God manifesting in your life. The mystery of Melchizedek is that he had power to release you into the fullness of your inheritance, the fullness of your destiny, the fullness of what you were supposed to possess, what you were supposed to have, what you were supposed to wear, how you were supposed to live, how you were supposed to drive, where you were supposed to be located. He had supernatural abilities to release benefits to his people. Money! Come it to me now. Melchizedek was moving in fresh oil. So when you see Abraham sowing into him, the Holy Ghost had Abraham connect with his anointing. Because Abraham was going to be releasing wholeness to the people of God that love the Lord Jesus. Abraham's mantle, his spirit, his angels was still going to be ministering to you. When you call on the name of the Lord and you ask King Jesus to take over your life, Abraham's mantle was going to rest and minister upon you. See, so you got to catch this. That King Jesus had a message, go in peace and sin no more. So, so when King Jesus said, go in peace, Remember, Melchizedek was the king of peace. So you got to understand that King Jesus was even releasing Melchizedek's power. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Go, go in peace. So now you got a new perspective about this. Go in the Melchizedek. Abrahamic blessing. He was saying go in the Melchizedek blessing and sin no more because Melchizedek wasn't a sinner. Abraham wasn't a sinner. They didn't have no problem with demons. The demons had problems with them. What? The evil spirits couldn't stop them. No evil spirits could block them. They was overriding.